Greetings Oracle Techies, Gruff DBA here with a quick 5 minute guide to acid. Acid? Wait, no, not that kind of acid. That kind of acid is bad, just say no to that. No, we're talking about acid compliant databases. Okay, boring legal stuff. All copyrights belong to their respective owners. Images and text owned by others are used here under the fair use provision of US copyright law. These images and text are used only for educational purposes for DBAs who hang out on YouTube. Trust me, I'm not making any money doing this. But I should let you know that when I do make money, I hang out with this dude. No, wait, not that dude. This dude. I work at Dell, just so you know. Oh, and my opinions, and I have lots of opinions, are my own. Michael and the rest of Dell do not necessarily agree. Okay, ACID database design. The term ACID was first coined by Andreas Reuter and Theo Harder, two German guys, back in 1983. Andreas and Theo based their work on some stuff done by Jim Gray, who came up with the ACD part, but not the I. But Gray points out that the IMS database supported ACID transactions back in 1973. So really, this is nothing very new. Okay, enough history. ACID is an acronym. The A is for atomicity. In our example, we have a vendor table and a product table. If, as part of our transaction, we delete Atari from the vendor table and Jaguar from the product table, atomicity states that the database must complete both parts of the transaction or none of the parts of the transaction. We can't have it partially succeed and partially fail. The transaction must be atomic. C is for consistency. In our example, we have a parent-child relationship between vendor and product. The vendor shown in the product table must exist in the vendor table. In this example right now, we have an inconsistency as Atari has been deleted from the vendor table. That is not allowed in an ACID compliant database. In Oracle, we can use foreign keys and primary keys to enforce consistency. I is for isolation. Isolation states that the data seen by a query or transaction must be isolated at the time when the query or transaction started. In our example, we are selecting all the products on the product table where the vendor is Nintendo. But right after we started our query, someone else added a new Nintendo product to the table. Since this was added after the query started, it should not show up in our results set if we are ACID compliant. The Oracle database uses the undo table space, formerly known as the rollback table space, to create read consistent images of blocks that have been changed after a query or transaction started. And lastly, D is for durability. Durability simply means that when records are added, updated or deleted from the database, they stay that way. They don't magically come back all on their own or mysteriously vanish for no reason. Oracle uses the redo logs to ensure committed transactions stay committed even after there is a failure in the database or hardware that it runs on. And that's ACID compliance for databases. This has been the Graph DBA. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button below or subscribe to the channel and check out my blog at graphdba.wordpress.com for more Graph commentary on just getting this Oracle stuff to work. Hope to see you again soon for another quick Graph guide.